ついにやったか。Welcome back to another episode on b e h o Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. Believe it or not, while being a total Sega fanboy growing up, the one company to put Sega in my mind at the time out of business on a console side was Sony and their PlayStation 2 and their new DVD ROM media. This was a huge blow to Sega and their last console, the Sega Dreamcast. Vowing to wait for anybody else like the PC market and Microsoft to play video games again. I missed a lot of top rated games at that time until, of course, I gave in with the release of Final Fantasy X. Some of the games I missed out on that I wish I played were from my favorite company as well, Capcom. So today we will revisit a game I truly never played until this year Animusha Warlords. I knew of the series for their awesome CG openings, but always had difficulty with tank controls like the Resident Evil series on the Sega Saturn and PlayStation. And before I knew it, just never got around to it with more attractive games like the awesome Devil May Cry. With Capcom remastering the game for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, here was my chance to try it out. Omni Musha. Warlords HD Remaster was developed by Neobards Entertainment and released by Capcom in 2019 for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Microsoft Windows via Steam. The game is a remaster of the original PlayStation 2 game and not the Genma Animusha released for the original Xbox. During an old war in Japan, Hiro Samonosuke watches after victorious Nobunaga Oda. Dies in battle. A year has passed and Samonosuke receives a letter from his cousin, Princess Yuki, for aid as she fears there is disappearances of her servants and that monsters are to blame. Running back as soon as possible with companion Kaede, Samonosuke finds the princess gone and must save her. The story is okay with monsters and demons you meet unravel the adventure as you progress. The writing is simple, but does a job as you are indeed trying to figure out the why and the how. There is really not any character development to speak of except for the resolve to complete the mission. Very little dialogue is used, making this a short affair, but I found using the Japanese voiceover felt much more emotional than the English ones that were used. The visuals have been updated. Although the character 3D models look much better and is where the most attention has been spent, the backgrounds look nice, but the age does not do them justice as they were not redone and looks blurry at times, especially compared to the characters in their crispier update. You can also choose whether or not to use the original aspect ratio at 4 3 or to move to widescreen. The game was not formatted for widescreen. So, if used, you lose space screen to just with a more zoomed look approach. I like the widescreen since the characters did look larger and the action seemed more hectic in that mode. This classic hack and slash game improves on the 3D character models that interact in pre rendered backgrounds. As you move the character around, the game comes with their own use of camera angles for each scene and is pretty much static. This was the same method used in the Resident Evil, hence, tank controls. Thank goodness, with updated controls, the game moves smoothly with the analog stick and probably is a bit unfair to those playing the original, which probably made the game a lot harder. 
heavy on light puzzles here and there is the real meat of the task driven progression. You will rack your brain at times figuring them out to get a new item or just to get more powerful. The game is super short, being around 4 hours for me to be never playing the game with those who play the game in the past will probably beat it in 2 plus hours. That is probably the worst part of the game is how shallow it truly is. Although the gameplay has been updated, it is still shallow at its core. For the power-ups and weapons and magic to the easy boss counters with an overpowered hero makes this game one and done. I do not recommend this game as a take two for backwards compatibility as you will get the same game, resolution and frame rate on a normal Xbox One, let alone a Series X, which I played on. Animusha Warlords HD Remaster gets a 7.0 out of 10 for its bare bones remaster of the original, but it's very playable with its updated controls, but it's way too short, but a fun glimpse to the past. Knowing that Animusha 2 and 3 were far superior, I hope that Capcom takes more care if they bring them back. That's it for me on this look at Animusha Warlords. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and great. Take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload.